how am I going to carry all of this? It's 5 o'clock on a cold Wednesday morning in Queens, New York. This is my lunch pail with about three meals in it. I have my gallon of water. Terry Morales is on her way to the gym, her daily ritual. And I am all set to go. And there is that morning paper route guy. <laughs> so we always meet each other in the morning. This will be Terry's last workout before her big competition this weekend. Today, she'll focus on arms, biceps, and triceps. In some ways, the gym is the most comforting place she could be after teenage years filled with turbulence and tragedy. As a young teen, Terry cared for her sick mother, who was suffering from cancer. She died when Terry was a junior in high school. Losing her was like my biggest loss ever. And, um, you know, you have like deaths in the family and you lose friends and things happen like in your life, but there's nothing like losing a mother. And you can never compare any hurt that you feel um, to losing a mother. It was really difficult. Terry ended up in foster care, and her experience led her to become an attorney representing children in the New York City foster care system. She immerses herself as much into her work as she does into working out. One client of mine said, you know what, I, I think you exercise a lot for, for a particular reason. And I asked her what the reason was, and she said, um, because exercise won't disappoint you because the gym will always be there. In a psychological sense, I think she hit it right on the nail. I think that in many cases, for both women and men, the ritual of going to the gym and working out hard has a clear psychiatric therapeutic benefit. It may be that, that in many of these cases, individuals are self-treating an underlying depression or are protecting themselves against a depression that might otherwise erupt. Hi. Hi, Terry. How are you? Good. Two days before Terry's competition, she's doing last-minute errands, tanning, buying a costume for her dance routine. Can I try on, on this outfit right here, the chain bra and the chain skirt? And getting her hair and nails done. Muscles aren't all that matter in a bodybuilding competition. It's about the whole package. It's definitely like a full-time job. The commitment has to be a 24-hour commitment. Sometimes other things in your life definitely get sacrificed because of this. I mean, if you're going for the win and you're going for the exposure and you're going for the endorsements and you're really trying to land those types of goals, then yes, it becomes a little bit intense and neurotic. <laughs> in between errands, Terry stops off to eat. More important than sleep and even exercise is diet. Most bodybuilders say it's at least 80% of the equation in being successful at what they do. That means micromanaging every crumb that goes into their mouths, down to a science most people can't comprehend. Here's the level of sacrifice female bodybuilders make for the sport they love. I went to my best friend's uh, wedding in Texas and I took 101 pieces of chicken on the plane uh, with me to the hotel. Uh, I, I froze it the night before, and it lasted for about maybe four to four days, four to five days. Um, and I had to like bring my own water down there, and I had tuna, and I just made all of my meals when I went to the wedding. What I crave right now, um, peanut butter and, and crackers. Just uh, sitting down with some like Ritz crackers and some creamy peanut butter. <laughs> The micromanagement of diet is a typical obsessional symptom, and it begins, perhaps, as a rational plan in order to be able to lose weight and manage calories. But very often, it goes off the edge into something which we would consider pathological behavior, to the point that it actually impairs the individual's social and occupational functioning. Very often, these women would describe to us that they would decline invitations to go to a restaurant, to a social gathering, to some other place, simply because they could not tolerate the possibility of deviating from their diet or deviating from some aspect of their exercise plan. In just a few weeks, Christy Hawkins will head to Columbus, Ohio for her contest, the Miss International. Today, she's posing for photographer Bill Dobbins for his website, BillDobbins.com. A recovered anorexic, 
Christie still maintains tight control over what she puts into her body. Put this knee down. What could she go for right now? A burger and fries. But she won't. It's just not worth it. Discipline, sacrifice, willpower. That's what being a female bodybuilder is all about. Now look at me with your eyes. I put so much work into it that I'm very proud of what I've accomplished and um, the way I look. I like the power that it represents, the strength, and um, I just think it's very attractive. Um, you know, the human body is amazing, and to look like an anatomy chart, I think it's pretty cool. When we come back, Game 40, we got 20 minutes. months at the gym, and it all boils down to just a few short minutes on the stage. The symmetry round, most muscular. The moment all bodybuilders live for. <laughs> 